Hi, this is Kaylee, and let's look at this problem where we got a solid metal sphere rolling down an incline without slipping. That's important, that phrasing right there, without slipping, because with that phrase there, we know that omega is equal to V over R. That's the way we can switch things up between those two. Once it's translational, or basically the, the speed, kind of center of mass speed, uh, the sphere as it gets to the bottom of the ramp. So for a sphere, the moment of inertia is two-fifths m r squared. And so we're going to first solve this out with the numbers given to actually figure out the velocity there. So this is basically a conservation of energy problem, where we have the energy at the top, and the energy at the top is all potential energy. Well, at the bottom, we actually have two types. There's no more potential energy because it's at the bottom at, the, at its lowest point. But it has kinetic energy from it moving as well as spinning. And so we'll have kinetic energy from the linear component plus the kinetic energy from the rotational stuff. And so both those together will give you the total energy at the bottom. But we actually want to know the speed it's moving across the floor with. So we're going to start solving things. So first of all, potential energy is mass times gravity times height. Kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. And rotational kinetic energy is 1 half i omega squared. And so moment of inertia for that sphere is this. And we can use this to change that into a linear type speed because it's not slipping. So let's start by working the numbers on this and seeing what we get. All right, so first of all, the moment of inertia is two-fifths the mass, in this case it's 0 0.5 times the radius squared, which is 0 0.025 squared. So if we actually calculate that, 0 0.025 squared times 0.5 times 2 divided by 5, we get a moment of inertia to be 1.25 times 10 to the negative 4 kilograms meters squared. I know it's kind of a weird unit, but that's what it is. We've got the mass to be 0.5. So if we just plug things in, we don't worry about canceling anything, we just plug things in, we get 0 0.5 times 9.8 times the height that drops, which is 1.5, equals 1 half the mass 0 0.5 times this Velocity, what we don't know just yet, but we got to figure it out. Plus one half the moment of inertia, which is this 1.25 times 10 to the minus 4 times this omega squared thing. Well, omega is this, so we can substitute that in. So let's go ahead and do some numbers to reduce this down a little bit. So 0.5 times 9.8 times 1.5 gives me 7.35 joules at the start. So 0 0.25, half of 5 is that. V squared plus 1 half of this 1.25 times 10 to the minus 4th. Now I'm going to substitute this in so we get v squared over 0 0.025, which is the radius, squared. Let's go ahead and calculate this number here. So we get 0.125 times 10 to negative 4 divided by 2 divided by 0 0.025 squared gives me 0.1. Wow, that reduced to just 0.1. So 7.35 equals 0.25 V 
squared plus 0 0.1 v squared. 0.15 v squared plus 0.1 v squared is 0 0.35 v squared. And let's just solve that now. So 5.35 divided by 0.35 equals that. Take the square root, and we get a translational velocity at the bottom to be 4.58 meters per second. Now, let's do this again, except this time, let's solve some things algebraically, and we'll see how that cleans up this problem. Okay? So, same problem. Now, let's just use some letters. So the moment of inertia for a sphere is two-fifths m r squared. And without slipping, that means omega can be substituted for v over r, velocity over radius. And let's do the same thing. So at the top, we just have potential energy. As it rolls down the bottom, we'll actually have two types of kinetic energy, a linear form plus a rotational component. And so if we just take this and actually just substitute in the equations. So potential energy is mass times gravity times the height. Kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. And rotational kinetic energy is one-half I omega squared. Now this is where we start off on the last problem. But this time, let's not plug in the numbers. Let's actually see what we can get. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute I and omega in. So we get mgh equals one half mv squared plus one half two fifths m r squared omega squared, so that would be v squared over r squared. And now look what we can do. This is nice because this r squared cancels out that r squared. There's a mass in every term, so that goes away. Let's clean that up a little bit. So we get gh equals one-half v squared. Oh, if we look again, this two and that two cancel out. So with one-fifth v squared. Add those two up. I want to do it as a little side. We'll do it the old school way. So one-half plus one-fifth least common denominator is 10, so this would be 5 over 10 plus 2 over 10. That's 7 over 10. Let's move that back over. So GH equals 7 tenths V squared. Well, I'll solve for V. So V squared equals... 10 times G times H over 7. So we take the square root. V equals the square root of 10 sevenths G H. Let's go ahead and put our numbers in. Let's see if we get the same answer as before. So we simplify that all down into just that expression right there. So, plug it in our numbers. 10 seventh, gravity is 9.8, and our height was 1.5 meters. All right, so here we go. 1.5 times 9.8 times 10, divide by 7, take the square root, 
we get 4.58 meters per second, which is the exact same answer we did before when we plugged all the numbers in before. So this is a great way to solve the problem if you don't want to do all that calculations in advance. Save it all, do all the simplification, and then just drop the numbers in at the end. And it turns out the mass made no difference whatsoever in this problem. Thank you again for watching. Tune in again for more physics. Bye.